What up, everybody? Welcome to yet another episode of These Corona Times. You are tuned in with everybody in a timely manner today. This, this week. <laughs> <laughs> As always, you cannot rush perfection, you okay? Can't. I'm gonna... you, can't. you can't. You know, and we all know that once you sit in the chair, there's no, there's no telling. What happens? You're at the people. mercy of the stylist. That's you right. have no right. control. That's well, right. So you, the hair still looks good, so you know it was worth. It. <laughs> Thank you. And it's been very versatile this week. I've seen lots of different styles and and you know scarves and things of that nature. It's a lot going on. <laughs> it's a lot going on. Before, I forget, before, before we get too far, you are tuned in with Tiffany, with Dr. Simone, oh, and with yeah. your boy Brandon. What's up, everybody? <laughs> you know, I want to know why I'm always mentioned last. Why? Why is that? Is that is You're that, at the bottom on my. Green. Well, I, I just go ladies first, you know, is how oh, I go. And then I also go oldest to youngest, which you like to remind us often that you are. Oh, wow. No, that's so, true. I, yes. I'm the middle child. I'm mm -hmm. the middle child. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. I'm, yeah. the young, I'm the young buck. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> we want to welcome y'all back, though. As you can see, we are in a good mood. We are uh, riding high off last week's episode. Some of us are riding on the vacation fumes. Yes. And, you know, we are here we are one more week yep we are here tonight to talk about holly jolly christmas or nah that's today's or nah or nah yeah probably nah mm -mm. probably nah mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway before we go jump into anything we always just want to say thank you guys it's been 28 episodes we are 28 episodes deep into this uh, we've got that's one more crazy. episode for you guys this year and then Looks like Corona's taking us into the 2021, so we will definitely be with you in January. Yeah, unfortunately. Exactly. Yep, we'll be back with mm -hmm. you all in January with more episodes. But until then, we always want to say thank you so much for liking, subscribing. We had really good engagement on last week's episode. Uh, you all were very vocal about your unpopular opinions and what you thought about <laughs> our unpopular opinions. <laughs> Tiffany and these marshmallows. I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna convert you to the marshmallow no, world. Marshmallows are a point of contention in my home because my husband is a marshmallow lover and I am not, and we have arguments about this daily. So <laughs> daily, daily. He's daily, to hear that. daily arguments over marshmallows. He is daily advocating for marshmallows in our home, and I am yeah. not here for it. Not here for it. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> yes, you all. Thank you so much for for continuing to support. I just got like an update a couple. I think early today saying we had one new view or one new like. We appreciate or something like one. that. I know. I'm pre pleasantly surprised every time. Like people are watching. That's right. I They're feel like every day watching. I get a notification about somebody liking the page. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we put together a really good, I mean, I'm biased, but we put together a good situation, a good show here, and we've been consistent, and that's not the case for everybody who tries these things, so I think that says something. Yeah. So thank you all for the support. We really appreciate it. Most yes, of for sure. Continue sure. to find us on Facebook um, at these Corona Times if you want to like and subscribe or watch with us when we have our watch parties are also available on YouTube at these Corona times. And, you know, just continue to like and share and follow and tell somebody and comment. We love the comments. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you are, you know, a bit older and you want to be sent the link, that's fine. We we'll will do send it. it. We will do, do it. it. I, I send it to certain <laughs> folks who are not tech savvy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know that we don't do, we haven't been doing our self-care. We've been doing gratitude, but we still want to check in with, you know, each other and see how y'all did this week. How did you take care of yourselves? Oh, man. How did I take care of myself this week? Um, no, I didn't do that either. I, I, got, <laughs> I was about to say, I got rest, but no, I didn't do that. <laughs> I did not take care of myself this week. <laughs> I abused myself this week. <laughs> I would say um, I I really didn't, but I went on a walk today, as these mm -hmm. two know. You know, I put in my, I have my new, my new little watch here that was not, didn't cost a lot of money, but it has a little tracker, right? Her eye notch, her eye notch watch. Whatever, <laughs> hater. Her Apple notch. <laughs> For the Samsung people, the Android lovers. But um, 
I have a certain number of steps. I'm not going to tell y'all because it's a low number. <laughs> and so I'm a little ashamed. But I'll just say I hit that times three today. So I went for a walk so. with a colleague. And I didn't want to go because I want to stay on my couch, but it felt really, really good. It's December, but there are bees outside. It is hot. It's warm. It is warm. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was nice. So I think that was self-care for me. Now, y'all got to think of something. What y'all do? Anything? Did y'all yeah. eat? Did well, you drink today, water? I, I just chilled today. Like, I've really been resting and relaxing today. Today is like, well, it's not a work day, but it's like my official kickoff of vacation. So I really just lazed around today all day watch football lay in the bed Haters. just hung out just enjoyed it <laughs> so uh you know I'll, I'll say i went over to my mom's house and uh you know the kids did the uh, the gingerbread houses over there so i was i guess you could add that outside of that i got i got nothing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay well <clears throat> vacations coming up so hopefully we'll get in some time for more uh self-care you know, um, so, i hate to say this, that's the thing about vacations is you do all the work beforehand so you're stressing yourself out and then when you come back from vacation you still got all this work you gotta do is there even really a reason to take a vacation i'm, I'm gonna take one regardless but <laughs> it feels like a setup yeah. right right yeah i'm definitely gonna come back to an inbox of like 100 plus when I go back in January, it's going to be ugly. And because I secretly hate myself, I'm probably going to work all through mine <laughs> because I secretly don't like myself. Yeah, that's what you do. That's what Simone does. That'll probably be what I do. That's accurate. Yes. Um, so we always talk about, you know, advocating and kind of highlighting a Black business or folks who are doing well in the community. Um, I'm just going to say we had, obviously, we had cooking, we had Khalifa on last week, cooking with Khalifa. I just want to say that my order has been placed and I cannot That's wait. <laughs> okay, I'm here for it. Khalifa has done the heavy lifting this year for Christmas for the cooking. I'm not, we're just making the sides. Mm -hmm. um, but aside from that, we really just wanted to kind of highlight all the different ways that people can donate. Um, this holiday season, there's, you know, we talk about how happy of a time, you know, this year is for folks, but the reality is there are a lot of people who are suffering and who are in need, especially this year because of the pandemic. And so um, we're going to put a little um, insert there to show all the different um, avenues you can take to, to donate to folks. Yes. Would y'all add to that at all? Well, I know it's probably on the list, but just want to remind you that um, here in Louisville, Vernon, I mention our church often. Uh, our church is doing a food pantry and they hand out food baskets every third Saturday. So it's coming up. Yeah, you wanna, coming up. Yeah. So if you are uh, in the Louisville area, especially in the Russell neighborhood, the West End area, you know somebody who's in need or you just want to donate, uh, feel free to stop by 1942 Magazine Street. I believe they, um, well, they accepted donations to, well, yesterday. Well, yesterday would be Sunday when y'all see this. So um they will be giving out baskets on the 19th and you can still donate if you like to on that day as well. I'm sure they would take and use it for the next giveaway. Most definitely. I will, you know, even if it's for this, this giveaway or the, or the next giveaways for next year, I will, I will personally come and pick up any donations. Uh, I've done that with, with a couple of folks already pick things up. And uh, yeah, I, I, if you want to, if you're willing to give, I'm willing to drive. So, <laughs> so thank, you, thank you in advance. For, and thank you for those that, uh, give on a consistent basis because uh, I know there are a couple of you that are out there that do give uh, every month and I really appreciate it but people people need it mm -hmm, for sure and we should be able to link the um, there's an article that we use to find all these different um, you know places you can donate to of course there's more I'm sure but you can click on the link and find the name and the contact person in the website if you want to donate to that particular organization so so please do so if you can. Um, Brandon, do you want to orient us to the episode? Yes, please. <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. Orientation. Most definitely. So <laughs> holidays are usually a you know a pretty happy time for, for a lot of us. We tend to think of Christmas and the time after Thanksgiving as just a really joyous time. There's there's jingle bells, there's all types of stuff going on. But while that is the case for a lot of people for a lot of folks, it, there's a lot of suffering going on, especially this year. And we wanted to acknowledge 
uh, not just the happiness, but also bringing acknowledgement to the not so great, not so pleasant side of what's been going on uh, during this holiday season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think it's, um, when we talk about like the inspiration for the episode, me, you know, we were looking for different ways to talk about this and we were like, okay. So my husband, Tiffany's husband said, you should just talk about your favorite Christmas memory. And I was like, what else we gonna no. do after that? <laughs> <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> What about the other 45 minutes, okay? <laughs> exactly, what else? So I can share though, we sh we can share. Like um, I would say for me, it's the, so every year my mom will put on a Christmas Eve dinner, which we've talked about on the show before. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge thing. And huge. It's actually huge, it's huge. It's bigly. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and um, we started doing it, I want to say the year that your family moved to Louisville, Brandon, and it was yep. kind of like in honor of your family and your, your dad was, you know, I was the pastor of our church back in the day. And so that's when that started. And it was at our old house, our Eagle Creek house there in Louisville. The Eagle Creek. And yes, <laughs> so many memories in the Eagle Creek house. So many memories. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Moving yes. On. <laughs> um, but those towns were always so much fun. I just remember food everywhere, games, church family. I mean, just everybody everywhere in the media room. It was just fun. Good, clean, fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was <laughs> it was wonderful. Wonderful time. Wonderful. Wonderful. With friends and family. Food and yes. And it's a tradition. So it continues on. It's not happening this year. So that is a uh, real bummer, but it will continue on after COVID has left us. We're gonna keep rolling. I'm telling you, man, that was some of, that was some fun times. It was one of the first time. Actually, it was the first time I ever had Cornish hen. He's uh, always talking about this Cornish hen. <laughs> I was making them. Do you know that I was making them? I did not know that, Simone. Yeah, that was me. That was all the you. One thing. Yeah, well, that was salute, me. Salute to you. <laughs> it was it was so much fun, man. Like you know, I, I don't think I know we've talked about it before, but the three of us. Uh, aren't just like recent friends. We go like way back. <laughs> back, back, mm -hmm. back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is really like, it's even expanded. Now your mom like has time slots about what time people can come over because some people are coming over at the same time and her house was overrun with folks. And we've said this before, she always, I don't know if she'll do it anymore because I think we killed her Christmas joy, but she always <laughs> has presents under the tree for everybody. Always. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now she has a she has a, 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 a present for you, Tiffany. She was talking about it. She said, Tiffany doesn't know, but I have a gift for her. Like, okay. <laughs> so there's, it's still happening. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. What about you all? What are your favorite Christmas memories? Well, mine um, is surrounded around my siblings. So I like to make Christmas magical and I call them my kids because they're younger than me. But the kids always say, you know, you're going to make Christmas magical for us this year. And it's usually just getting trying to get something that they can't get, you know, or like a special gift or something like that or a nostalgic gift or, you know, anything of that nature. Especially since, I was, since I'm four years older than the youngest one was well, the, the second oldest one I started trying to get stuff like when I was able to make money or whatever just buying them an extra special gift for Christmas so my mom we were just talking about this last week over Deshaun's house but my mom threw away a bunch of toys you know, like you parents who go around terrorizing and racking up the kids toys and throwing them out in the trash mm -hmm. yeah I'm about you too. get them out you get them out of here yeah well she threw away one of Deshaun's toys um because she thought it didn't work or whatever this was like 20 years ago and we had been looking for this toy for years and I finally found <laughs> it um on eBay for like mm. it wasn't life like $30. Uh so I ordered it for for Christmas. It came when he opened it, he cried. And I was just like, yes, Aww. magical. You know, my brother's <laughs> six over six foot, you know, big dude, he's sitting up for holding this toy crying. I felt special on the inside. It touched what me. What game was it? Well, well, it, was, was it? It was a big Frank. I don't know if you all have ever seen the big Frank before because they shine like four years older than us, but it was like, it's like a, it's like a doll was this high and it's like, looks like a baby Frankenstein. And like it had parts inside. If you open his chest, it was like his heart okay. was broken. You could fix his heart. He had little toys inside mm -hmm. of his, uh, his head. It, just, it talked to you and stuff. 
And I guess my mama thought it was broken and she decided to throw it away. So she was like, nah, wow. you don't need this anymore. <laughs> that is magical. I like that. See, I can be nice sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Deep down. Deep. For, for, for me, you know, Christmas, again, like we talked about, you know, Christmas not being like my most favorite, but <laughs> I specifically remember getting an Xbox growing up and it was a gift that my parents told me I wasn't going to get and we ended up getting it. I, I was like so, so happy because we never got game systems when they first come out. Like mm -hmm. never. It was always like, yeah, we'll get you one down the road. And mm -hmm. I just remember getting that. And it was like, wow. Like, I played that thing so much. <laughs> <laughs> and this, is, this is the first Xbox, folks. This is the big, the, the big original. black one, the original, the big black one with the green circle mm -hmm. on the inside. That's the one. How old were you? What, I have freshman, freshman, sophomore. Yeah, definitely like my 14, 15. Yeah. Yeah. I remember being at your house for around holidays and then we'd be down in that room and y'all be playing. Of course, I was not involved because I'm after Super Nintendo. I was done. She was, <laughs> she was done with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was it, man. I love mm -hmm. Xbox, man. I'm glad nice. that's the memory that you choose to share with us this evening, Brandon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think I mean it's good. Of course, we all have some good memories of Christmas, and we will continue to have stuff. To, to have those and also I think that we sometimes in general especially with, like, with the commercialization of it all have a very one-sided view mm -hmm. um I want to do y'all do y'all see that too do you think y'all have been complicit in the ignoring of those in need yeah. it's like a crime during the season <laughs> it, it is a crime <laughs> y'all been complicit <laughs> I mean oh, sure yeah sure. Sure, sure. It's it's all about, I mean, at the end of the day, I've always had enough. And I've never needed, the things that I got for Christmas have been extra things. And mm -hmm. could we have decided to take that money for gifts and give them to someone that was less fortunate? Yeah. So yeah, I'll, 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 I'll throw that in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have made a note in the notes that I have been down on Christmas. So like I've been sad on Christmas before, but I've never been out. So I've never been out of money to buy presents. I've never been out of receiving presents. I've never been out of food. I've never been out of a home. Um, so I think definitely when, as we were talking about before, we were having the discussion earlier about how COVID is kind of far away from us. So we don't really grasp that perception of how bad it really is. I think the same mm -hmm. is about Christmas. I'm like, if you've always had and not having as far from you, you don't really have a perception of how hard that is. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep. For sure, for sure. And I, and I think I align with you both. I've never not had enough. I've always had, had everything that I needed and a lot of what I wanted. And so it's, you know, it's really easy to kind of turn a blind eye to how other people are suffering. And that, I think that's really, really true this year. And so if you don't want to hear about <laughs> the other side of that, you should not watch today. This is um, Mom's sad Christmas sandwich. This no, year. it is not. <laughs> <laughs> we all agree to talk about this because everybody on the the commercials, that little was it Target? The holidays are coming. The holiday, you know, what I'm talking about yeah. the little jingle. Um, yeah. They're talking about spending. Like you can still, you can still buy gifts, and there's nothing wrong with buying gifts, right? But there are people who cannot, really cannot do that um, every year, but particularly particularly this year. And we were kind of doing some research and we were looking at the unemployment rate right now, the homelessness rate and food insecurity this year um, and how those numbers have drastically increased because since March, people have not been able to work in the way that they were before. And it's it, the holidays is a very difficult time right now. Yep. And I'm glad that we're talking about it because I think that, um, you know, in this vein of commercialism, I think the saddest thing being portrayed on commercials right now is that people can't make it home for Christmas. 
you know, I saw yeah. a wonderful commercial from Etsy, but it was making you buy stuff. But it was just like this little boy gave his grandmother this doll. And he I was love like, it. Because you can't, you can't see us. And I was like, oh, my heart. But, you know, it makes us feel like the worst thing about this season and this time is that we can't be together and see each other. But really, there are people who just, who want, don't have anybody. Um, you know, we've been fortunate enough, Joel and I, to be able to go out um, Joel more than I do, but go out at least uh, every weekend to help his family pass out bags on behalf of the uh, Noah Goodwin Scholarship Foundation. And we just see so many people who have nothing, like just nothing. They, they're they thankful for whatever they get. But they don't have a home. They don't have clothes. They don't have blankets. They don't have anything. And I'm just like this. There's so much more going on. Like we're kind of in this bubble of, oh man, I'm not gonna get to go over such and such's house. I'm not gonna get to eat this. I'm not gonna get to hang out with them. But then you have people who are really like, I don't know where I'm gonna be sleeping tomorrow. Right. Right. I don't even know if I'm gonna be in this spot on tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, with the holidays, it always comes like for in our in my family, and I think all of us agree. There's always a big dinner, right? There's like a dinner, and you gorge, and it's always a thing. Yes. Right, but this year, would you say? I said yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and you see these platters, and we take pictures and we post them, and that's wonderful. And mm -hmm. um, it's important to note that um, some of the data out there shows that nearly 26 million adults, 12 percent of all adults in in this country, reported that their household um, sometimes or often um, didn't have enough food to mm -hmm. eat in the last several days. Mm -hmm. And that kind of go comes into in terms of like um, ratio or whatever you call it, one in six adults. Yeah, one in six. So I could fit six people in my living room. So one of those people would say, "I don't have enough food to put on my table." That yeah. is really staggering. Yeah, that's staggering. Yeah, it's difficult. You so I, I mean, you're seeing they're covering this more now in the news stories, but now more than ever, we are seeing um, stories of people are sitting in line and they're saying, I've never had to stand in line for food before. Like never mm -hmm. ever in my life had to stand in line for food before. And people are really hurting. Like this, this thing, this COVID has impacted us in such a terrible way. Um, not just on like the job front or even physically and emotionally, it's really impacting folks financially and people really are unable to provide for their families. And I don't know, maybe if we could get like, another stimulus check or something um, like maybe, maybe that would be helpful it help a little bit mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I, I remember just seeing uh there was a big story not too long ago just the food lines the food uh food food pantry lines at some of these places were like stretched so far, like miles long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, this mm -hmm. is <laughs> this is crazy. Was that in Texas where they show, were I showing so. that? Yep. I thought it was in mm -hmm. Georgia too, wasn't it? Where the lines are long in Georgia? I, I saw the one probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. Like, this is just my ignorance. Like I'm sitting here thinking these people have to wait here. Are, are there cars on the whole time? Are they wait? Are they running out of gas trying to get this food? Like, what does that even look like for them? And I don't understand it because we're so used to having a table full of everything you could imagine that it's really easy to turn a blind eye and to not recognize that, you know, the food that we're throwing out, people could really Somebody could use really Somebody use could use. that. And, that, and mm -hmm. that just gives you it just gives you a sense of of, of the bubble that Tiff said that we're in, you know, we're 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 very fortunate, folks, man. We're very mm -hmm. fortunate, and you know, sometimes you know you do forget, you do forget that there are other individuals that don't live uh, like you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's not even just talk about the food aspect. There are folks that you know eviction protection runs out here soon, so there are folks that are that are struggling with rent and they may be newly homeless yeah. here pretty soon as well. Yeah. Doesn't all that end at the end of the year? Like it runs out. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was gonna ask you. Yeah. So is there are there any talks of them re upping? I know Trump will still be in office in the new year. So probably no. But are there <laughs> are there any talks <laughs> of like that continuing or is everything just gonna be it, really, it really, really really don't know. I mean that's there's yeah. been like no no word on that right yeah i have a strong feeling that we're going to end this year with nothing and it'll have to be on the next administration 
to mm -hmm. look into that mm -hmm. as soon as they get in because I mean his focus is elsewhere he's he's worried about fighting this very legitimate election that he lost <laughs> and he lost and listen, he I legitimately saw, lost <laughs> I saw somebody say somebody said that Joe Biden don't won this election so many times he is now the 67th president <laughs> 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 that is so true. Trump has every case he loses, he multiplies his yeah. losses. Like you keep losing this election. Yeah. Lose, Across the country. Biggest. Yeah. And so this goes back to what we said earlier, because I want to just, you know, reiterate, we're just not anti-Republican. We just kind of don't like Trump a lot, but he well, could have really- I am so no. anti-Trump. Yeah, not anti-Republican. Not anti-Republican anti at all. Trump. I am anti-Trump. <laughs> yeah. He could have <laughs> used- these last couple months because it has been it was like november and december to really do something to kind of i would say redeem himself i would almost say like do what you could in the last 100 days of your time here and try to redeem yourself for what you didn't do you know i was really hoping that that's what he would do to try to give himself some sort of legacy other than one of like scandal and impeachment and you know russia and all that stuff it was like no I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm just going to dig my heels in deeper and see where I can get with this. So there's yeah. money that has been wasted on recounts. Oh, oh. That money could have gone somewhere Millions. Else. Millions of dollars. They could have gone towards another, you know, mm -hmm. another need. They could have gone towards some of this rent relief. It could have gone towards uh, food bank donations, anything. It's Absolutely. like, why are you not mm -hmm. doing anything to help people? You're going to, you know, carry yourself to the bitter end and be selfish mm -hmm. to the bitter end instead of doing something to reach back and help the people that you're supposed to be serving. Mm -hmm. It's really, really tone deaf for them to go day in and day out into these courtrooms, pleading a case that where there is none. Mm -hmm. And that's not, we're not lawyers, but the, the lawyers have said, the judges okay. have said there that is there's no nothing, <laughs> that there's no there there. And so it's really tone deaf to know that there's that going on and the backdrop is people don't have enough food and the stats say, the data says that there are millions having difficulty paying their rent. People are not caught up. And also we didn't mention before about the not having enough food and also not being able to pay your rent or mortgage that this is also disproportionately affecting black and brown communities. Of course. So, you know, if you can't pay your rent, then that means you also are likely to be having trouble getting food on your table. Mm -hmm. um, so four in 10 kids are living in rental housing they're living in households that either don't have enough food or they're not able to pay their rent. And even if you are a homeowner, the estimated 9.4 million adults are not caught up on their mortgage. So even though people with mortgages typically make higher salaries, mm -hmm. even those folks are suffering and can't, can't pay their house note. Like how, I have accidentally not paid my mortgage before and the backlash you get <laughs> when you don't pay. Oh my, you, you would think they're coming to pull you out that day. <laughs> I'm like, my bad. I just got busy and didn't pay. So I can't imagine what it must be like to not be able to pay. And it's a horrible, I, I'm kind of caught up in a matrix, right? So a lot of the uh, black and brown people who are struggling, you know, to stay afloat are also frontline workers in a sense no they may not be the doctors and the nurses but they are like the janitorial staff the yep. grocery store folks maybe the uh, post office people like people who are in immediate danger of getting covid so they can't get sick but they have to go to work in an environment where they could get sick and then they still have to figure out how they're going to feed their families and pay their bills yep. it's a lot a lot to carry like you are, you really like you legit cannot get sick especially if your whole family is relying on your income Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you do get sick, you still want to go to work. People still want to go because they can't miss that check. Yeah, and so it's like, check. what do you do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which could, yeah. which could further again, which is, to me, having a, a an equitable and just society just is just it's secure for everything. Yeah. I mean, come. I I was watching something again. This is not. This is similar related. I was watching a uh, a video. There was this lady that works for McDonald's, and she said she was basically saying the exact same thing that you were saying, Simone, about going to work. She's like, I don't come into work after coughing and sneezing and just feeling super sick because I can't not work. How many sick folks with COVID are going into work right now because they have to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How crazy yeah. is it to even think about that? 
right right yeah and don't don't and don't add us okay just don't but for the people who are working in these grocery stores you got people who come in and refuse to wear masks amongst the people who are working working please stop like yeah just just put it on they don't want you they don't want your saliva and oh. your spittle in the air it's near you. <laughs> <laughs> and they can't go anywhere. They have to stay. So please. So we got hit really hard last for last week's episode. Someone was really begrudging by us saying we don't have the Christmas spirit and we are a bunch of Grinches. <laughs> but the, I, I think in this sense. <laughs> In this discussion, the Christmas spirit here is just a little bit of compassion for other people. Yes. Like, yep. like you know, that. again, we're in the we're in these privileged bubbles, we're in these privileged spaces, you know. There's oftentimes of me not wearing a mask, it may not impact somebody else, but really you're impacting other people. Um, you know, folks yes. our age are the ones that are walking around asymptomatic, you know, who don't know they have it, don't have any symptoms, and are spreading it to people who are um not as fortunate to be able to fight it off like we could or not as likely to have favorable outcomes. So, you know, show a little bit of compassion for folks this season and just put put the mask mm-hmm. on or just stay inside. One or the other. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did I tell y'all about the trash, the mask event happening right up the street for me at our mall? Seriously? Are, they, tell burning y'all about the that? Are they burning them or something? No, it, I think from what I read, it actually ended up kind of falling apart, but it was at our uh, Concord Mills Mall and they were going to come to, it was a big group and they were doing this trash the mask event and they were all going to go to the food court and have dinner together as a group without their masks on. Um, and then, which I think like you can eat and not wear your, so that's not even a, a big deal, but then they were going to have a group shopping event together as a group without masks. And so I read that the workers were going to be offering the masks. And that if they didn't take them, that they could like charge them with like trespassing or whatever. I don't think it ever went down, but just the thought that, cause our governor just put, he had put his new regulations or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so they were protesting and I'm like, you got people here trying to work. I smell the COVID. And you, the air. that's all. Right. Like why? <laughs> why are you doing and it? So, the, the crazy thing is these folks are so bold. They are willing, if you don't want to wear a mask, Go go have a gathering at your house. Yeah, let have them over at your home. You have, I was talking to one of my clients and she said it great. She was like, you have the right to not wear a mask. You do, you You do. do. You do have the right. Just by you not wearing a mask in a place where others are, you're you're infringing on their right to be safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they don't, and that's not a concept they, those, a lot of those individuals comprehend. It's like, yo, you don't have to, if you don't want to wear a mask, fine. Just go away then. Mm -hmm. Go away. (laughs) That's what I would like to see this Christmas season. Just some compassion for others. Some compassion for the frontline workers, like in in and outside of the medical field that have to deal with this firsthand. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I'm working from home. I can have stuff delivered to my home. I don't have to go anywhere. But if you're going to go somewhere, at least you could do is be safe and try to protect people around you. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really a trickle down, right? Because I think what we found from um, just the research is that when, you know, there's not enough food, there's no rent payments, you know, or mortgage payments, you also are, ha- people are having trouble paying for their usual utilities. expenses, your yeah. medical bills, your yes, utilities, your car payment, your student loans. Mm-hmm. And again, this is disproportionately affecting black and brown communities and, it's just staggering. People have trouble paying for that stuff anyway. Mm-hmm. So I can't imagine right. what it must be like this year. Yeah. You know, we, we talk a lot about the stimulus checks and, you know, how excited we were for them. But it was mostly like, I'm going to put this away for savings or it's extra money I could spend or whatever. You know, and legit, there are people who are just really relying on money like that to come in all the time. Like they don't they don't have it like we do, like some people do out here because they don't have steady employment. So just the fact that our government thought it was okay to just give one time this twelve hundred dollars, <laughs> you all just figure it out for your first sale. The rest one of time and yeah. nine and eight months later, that's all we got. That's pretty rough. That's you know? it. it is rough. It is. Are they? They're talking about trying to do another one, right? Uh, the, the, I think the, the latest one, the latest uh, talks. Oh, don't have direct payments, so don't have a stimulus payment to folks. 
oh, dead hands can't get his life together and push this along. <laughs> Did we ever did we ever diagnose what's going on with his with He's his dying? Hands? He doesn't have a soul. That's what's wrong with him. He doesn't have it. His soul is leaving his body one fingernail at a time. If his fingernails start falling off, we know something <laughs> sounds really wrong. wrong. <laughs> oh my goodness. He looking, looking yeah, bad. Yeah, that's that's he's not looking good. And you know. I can't help but think that there's something to that. Like when you don't take care of other people, when you've been given so much, I want to understand he, and not just him, but all of these people Others. in power, they, yeah. they're like millionaires. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how did y'all get, how did, I, don't, I didn't know there was so much money in power. I'm just not really getting into politics. I didn't know that there was millions to be made, I guess. So much money in politics. It's my own ignorance. Um, and so they're doing their jobs, but as we were talking about unemployment a second ago, so the rate of joblessness jumped in April. Mm -hmm. um, about 10.3% of Black workers, 8.4% of Latinx workers unemployed. Um, and that was since October when these um, numbers were um, kind of taken. But- Sure, Simone, because unemployment is so good. I mean, it's just the employment rate. For, and, and for, for the Black. For, 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 maybe one, for, one, for maybe one group. <laughs> maybe one group. <laughs> Everybody's black. Employed. I've never never seen so many jobs before in all my life. <laughs> in all my life, it's never been this good. Never. Especially for the black. <laughs> and of course, the job losses are happening for these low wage industries that we were talking about that again mostly are, you know, taken up by people of color. Um, and it's just it's hard to fathom. And so I think we I love what you said, Tiffany, about the compassion. Mm -hmm. um we have to think about other people the yeah. caretakers people who are transportation workers you know caretakers what about the people who can't go to work because their kids have to do nti mm -hmm. i mean we're blessed to be able to still work and take care of our child everybody can't do that um i had a situation happen uh recently where there was a child left at home because their, their mom had to go to work and so the power went out around here and they couldn't get a hold of their parent and so we had mm -hmm. to step in I'm sure that that mother, that parent did not want to be leaving their kid at home, yeah. right? But what choice you was there? You did so, check. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, because the domino effect. You need the check. To make sure y'all have food. To make sure you got a place to live. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. so you have mm -hmm. to make these hard decisions. And then I want to say, when we're talking about unemployment, I'm just thinking my mind is thinking about small businesses. I love yeah. that we highlight businesses on here all the time, especially ones that are not mainstream or you know some sort of chain or anything like that because you know while we've been talking about this is a great time to launch your small business and get yourself out there it's also a very difficult time for folks who are in small businesses you know I know a lot of local Louisville restaurants that have had to close this year because of the you know the state that we're in so you know heart goes out to those folks too who are self-employed um, small businesses who have five to ten workers or whatever who are trying to cover wages for those folks and it's difficult to do during these times. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. How do you do that? Because I, my, I know we've had kind of we had a one big one big shutdown, but then there, I feel like there's been a yo-yo effect. Definitely. You know, <laughs> where you open up and you're like, okay, you can have more people, but then no, you can you can have fewer. And I wonder financially what that does to a business. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that that inconsistency is on that that money flowing up and down is just I'm sure that's a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, especially these mm -hmm. businesses who aren't ready for maybe like takeout or to do deliver who can't do delivery because they're not large enough you know I think mm -hmm. that's probably really hurt them a lot but I think I think our restaurants are open to 50 percent here in Louisville okay. that doesn't matter because people will eat outside in the code apparently which I saw this weekend <laughs> what now what did you say they're eating outside in the cold like next to these fire pits <laughs> and I'm like it can't be it can't be that good oh they're out there building fires yes <laughs> I ain't never had food good enough for me to stand out, stand outside, or sit outside in 30 or 40 degree temperature. No, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm, viable mm -hmm. in the daylight when the sun is out. But if I see you out there at night, then you're just crazy. I can't. <laughs> I mean, listen, is this the crew that wears the the shorts and the long sleeve shirt and the <laughs> and the, yeah. and the flip flops? <laughs> The one that, and, and you know, it was warm in Louisville this weekend, so they had that on, but they'll probably be sick tomorrow because oh, <laughs> probably they don't realize it's probably <laughs> Friday really was exactly. nice, so. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) so I know we talked about you know the stimulus and how you know that a lot I didn't know people were some there some people were still waiting on their money yeah yeah I did not know who is still waiting on that how do you go about getting your money yeah I know I'd be like just forget forget it yeah you have to contact the IRS Um, I think there was a special I know somebody who did not get there so they're going through this process now it's a special Mm -hmm. form they had to fill out to make a request they did not receive and it still takes time to get it processed after that so I think as of today money has still not been received so it's like it's good if it works but what do you do for the ones that slip through the cracks because there's bound to be some people you know change of address or you know anything that had caused it to be thrown off in the system so how do they get their money and what happens to that money does it go back into the fund or is, yeah. where does it go mm-hmm. you know that's interesting though because when we got the the, the stimulus i'll Stim- say it like that the stimulus Stimuluses. um that was before the postal system got jacked up deliberately and so <laughs> <laughs> If there's check, well, wait, no, wait a minute. It was direct, was it direct deposit? It was direct deposit, right? It was, it was direct deposit. So yeah. A lot of folks, it was direct deposit. But if okay, both, both were available, no, both were available, they could get checks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just wonder if there's somebody's check. Just... Don't, don't talk about the post office. <laughs> I'm triggered. Okay. I don't want, I don't want to talk about them right now. They're messing up my packages. This is a problem. <laughs> yes. I don't expect to get those packages. Just don't I, do uh, it. <laughs> Ship move my shipments to UPS and FedEx, which is terrible. <laughs> right. Right. So aside from all of that, aside from all the things we talked about, there are other things that are taking place that are especially horrid right now and terrible that I'm gonna let Tiffany talk about because you know more about it than, than I do. Yeah, so we were talking about um, this case that happened this this past weekend. I believe the gentleman's name was Brandon Bernard. Um, he was one of the most recent executions that happened in the last few days. And it kind of sparked another, a bigger discussion, which is that um, I believe it's what, maybe 12? It's, it's a double digit number of folks that are scheduled to be executed between, um, well, shoot, it was between like September and the end of the year. And um, the majority of them are people of color and it's astounding like the the interesting thing to know about that is that um executions have been put on hold there have been no executions in like 20 years um i was also reading another article that said trump is the first um president to follow through with executions during his lame duck period so that time where you have no well the time of your between your election in the new administration that's called the lame duck period he's the only one to continue to follow through um with executions during this time which is just there was so much here i mean there's a lot to that case i, I would urge you to read it google uh brandon bernard read more about it um and then decide for yourself i know there's mixed emotions about death penalties and all kinds of things of that nature but it just sounds like there was a lot of room for doubt um this thing happened over what 20 years ago um there was a lot of new evidence that had been found was a lot of stuff that they had found had been done wrong because he didn't have a great legal team at the time. And a lot of people, I'm talking about like both sides, like jurors, uh, prosecutors, a lot of people were speaking out on his behalf, even though people that Trump looks at like celebrities, they were like, oh, maybe we should look at this case. And he was like, not going to do it. Not going to do it. But he helps the blacks though. You know, he helps the the blacks. But but it it seems like he has some type of of uh, bloodlust um uh, by by losing mm-hmm. and it's it's just he's he just feels like his efforts could be put towards doing something so much more beneficial i mean really and then it just also makes me feel like at this point are we like why are we just killing black people because it's fun the black and the brown people because it's fun like why are we all taking this taking this stay off of executions all of a sudden I, I I think it's to give his base something, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't know what that family went through or what their, um, you know, what their process is for grieving, but I did see they made a statement where they thanked the president for carrying through on justice. And I'm like, is that, is that really what happened here? Um, mm-hmm. You know, is that really a, a carriage through of, of justice on their part? They felt like they had some sort of some sort of relief, some sort of 
victory in this situation. And I don't know where that family is in their process of grief, like I said, but you know, there's, there's just so many things about that, including the fact that this young man that was executed um, was an accessory. Like they don't even know if he actually did anything. <laughs> <laughs> but the person that said they saw him set the car on fire was like I don't I don't know it could have it could have been any one of them you know honestly he was 18 at the time the person that actually shot the, the this couple he actually was already executed earlier this year and then the other couple people who were involved in the case uh, were involved in the incident they both got like 20 years or 35 years and they're one of you know a couple of them already out so they felt like they just they over um, charged him they penalized him too harshly shouldn't have gave him the death penalty, but you know, nothing they could do. But again, he does, he helps the black people. He, he's a president of the black people. <laughs> sad, I I'm sorry, Brandon, what were you gonna say? Oh, I was just saying sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what I missed there. I'm sorry, my internet's acting funny, but- um, We just I covered, think were... covered the whole, the situation and the, and the execution. And we talked about like killing black people for sport and how it just seems like, he's occupying himself with this activity instead of doing something else that could be more beneficial to people who are actually in need. Yeah, it's like, what, what a way to spend your last couple days in office. Um, what a way to, I don't know, like finalize or seal your legacy there. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like you said, there's so, much, so many other things that, that could be done right now and that's what you do. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the rush is other than, I don't know, revenge. I don't know. That's what I'm going with. I mean, yeah. I shared it while you were gone, Simone, but we were saying, we talked about this in the poll already, but I was saying that there's been a 20 year stay on executions. You know, nobody has done any in 20 years. And they sparked them up in the middle. I was reading this, this was crazy. I read this in the Huffington Post. They sparked up the executions in the middle of COVID. And you have to have a special execution team to come and carry this out. And you're putting more people at risk of getting COVID. In fact, they had stats that said, you know, a good percentage of people have gotten COVID after performing an execution. Huh. So you're oh. putting folks at risk wow. to do it in the first place. I did not know that. Yeah, that's crazy. I'll share that link somewhere in, in our mm -hmm. credits or something so other folks mm -hmm. can read about. But again, I just encourage you to Google it. And not just that, but Google the execute, like Google all of this. Don't just take our word for it, go look it up, read it for yourself, be, be educated about yeah. this information. Yeah, yeah. We, we use it pretty on point with our enough, with our with our facts, figures, and everything like that. But don't don't rely on us for everything. Definitely mm -hmm. do your own research and uh, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. come to your own conclusions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we should be able to post the links um, that we use below if you want to read what yes. what we where we got our information. Um, but definitely do your own research and. Um, I also want us to talk about seasonal affective disorder, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, people, again, we always talk about being happy during this time of year, but, but there are a lot of people who suffer during these months with, you know, mental illness, especially yeah. during kind of the dark, cold, dreary months where there's less sunshine. Um, and um, I was interviewed um, about seasonal affective disorder, which um, is a form, it's a type of depression and it is just kind of like the symptoms are kind of confined to, you know, this season, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of the symptoms are, we, most people know about the symptoms of depression, feeling persistently sad, not being interested in, you know, things that you normally would be interested in. Um, so with seasonal affective disorder, you'll see, you know, loss of energy, hypersomnia, which means sleeping more than usual, overeating, weight gain, and a craving for carbohydrates. So your pastas, your breads, that kind of thing. Um, and so you might also see other symptoms associated with depression. Like I said, the sadness, not really interested in the things that you used to do. Um, and, you know, these, I think, you know, even myself, I feel a little sad during this time of year. A lot of people do. Um, we're just not getting as much vitamin D as I'm sure Tiffany will, will chime in on. Um, but it's really about the clinical <laughs> you mentioned it. <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah. I did. But well, go ahead. It's really about, you know, how are those symptoms impacting you? If it's so bad and the symptoms are so severe that you cannot do the things you normally would do, then that's when you would, you know, meet criteria for maybe a diagnosis of major depressive disorder and it's called with seasonal pattern not season not um 
seasonal affective disorder, but everybody knows what that what that is. So I'm going to use that term. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's I feel a little sad this time of year, but it's not clinically you know significant. But yeah. for a lot of people, it is. Yeah, I was going to say these are all also symptoms of just COVIDness, like being in a pandemic, like all these things that you're saying. I've been feeling since the summer. And I'm gonna mm-hmm. gonna make my vitamin D reference, and I'll let Brandon chime in with what he <laughs> wants to say. But you know, if you've been watching the show for the 28 episodes, you you do know that somewhere around the time that it got cold, I stopped going outside. I was no longer doing that, um, only to find out that when I you know went to my doctor for like my regular uh, checkup and they ran blood work, they were saying that my vitamin D was very low. Like I had vitamin D deficiency and I had no idea. And I was feeling the things that Simone mentioned, like being tired, being fatigued, sleeping oddly, like eating weird stuff. But I just, you know, kind of just chalk it up to this is a weird time. I feel weird. So, you know, it's, it's amazing how um, these things are affecting different, different things in your body, you know? So definitely if you, if you're like where Simone said, where she was talking about, like, she's not, it's not clinically, what you say? It's not a clinical concern. Right, it's at clinic, yeah, at the clinical level. I would also advise if you go, if you're going to the doctor. I know some people are trying to stay out of there if you don't have to be there. But if you're going to the doctor for something, get your blood work ran, just get checked, and just kind of mm-hmm. see where you are. You might be deficient on some things, and some vitamins could help could help bring that up a little bit. Most definitely, mm-hmm. man. You know, for me, what hurts the most is I get up when this when it's dark. <laughs> Why? By the time I'm done with work, it's dark. The sun is down. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm just like, God, Liz, like I worked 20 hours a day. What's going on? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. You, if you feel so defeated, you know, if you're like yeah. us and you work a lot, then you, you know, you want to get as much done so you can still have some day left, mm-hmm. but it's 530 and it's dark and it's like, <laughs> you got three hours of work left and it's mm-hmm. so sad. I feel it's like, like it's that, that same effect they have on you in Vegas where they don't really have like windows and stuff and you can't see out. <laughs> And you feel like it, it has been like an hour, it's been like six hours. I feel like right, that's right, that right. we're going through now. I feel like you look down, you feel like it's been an hour. It's been it's been six hours. Like we're I still got stuff to do. I still have work to do. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So if you're feeling these things, maybe it's not, you know, super severe, but you feel a noticeable change. You know, people, like we said, are doing a lot of telehealth right now. Um, even with their medical doctor. So mm-hmm. check in, ask somebody, you know, look it up even. I, I'm not an advocate for, you know, WebMD or anything, but listen, just, you can give it a little search no. and see what you come up with. No, not a, WebMD. No, As don't a do it. librarian, I'm going to interview <laughs> on you. <laughs> Fine. I don't like it, but I'm just saying people going to search. They're going to do it. No, and you know, WebMD is a, is a very justifiable resource. The problem is, mm-hmm. <laughs> it happens a lot when you tend to read something all of a sudden you have all those symptoms so it's like it plays with your head oh, I got that mm-hmm. I got yes. that so mm-hmm. after Please, you read on. call a professional talk to a professional ask because people gonna read they're gonna do it yeah, I see it right. every day yeah, and honestly I encourage that I have this and this like no Come I heard like reading. That. It is it is great mm-hmm. to be an advocate. Uh, I'm sure Brandon might chime in on that. It's a great to be an advocate mm-hmm. for your own health care. And part yes. of that is being knowledgeable as much as you can. So, you know, I always encourage people to look up your medications, look up your diagnoses when doctors tell you you have something, go read about it. And there are, you know, people get a little afraid of the big medical words, but there are uh, sites you can go to um, mm-hmm. that will break it down for you in a, in a language, in a verbiage that you can understand and that's easy to read. And I'm not saying that as, even as a person with a master's degree, sometimes Dr. Jargon is not something I want to read. Two master's degree. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, double double the master's degree. I still don't want to read the medical jargon. I want to read it in the simplest. Tell me how you tell kids. What is it? And yes. What it? <laughs> that's what I yes. want to read. So there are things mm-hmm. you can do for that. And I want to know, since they're talking about telehealth, do they telehealth blood work? Because I want to figure out how to do that so I don't have to get any, is there a way? I don't want to get shot. You know what? <laughs> you know what? Sean's job sent all these packages so he could do his biometrics by himself. Mm-hmm. I think that's what that is. There's what packages you, in there he has not touched. How you gonna get the blood? I don't know, but I asked him, can I do it? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I don't I know. Warn- that's a that's a medical question. I have no idea. I need to warn Sean <laughs> about that. You trying to trying to stick him with some needles? What? <laughs> Be leery of people who are way too excited about sticking you. <laughs> <in the> okay. 
Simone's way too excited about that. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Although I need those people in my life because I won't, I won't stick myself. I won't do it. I will not. Um, she when, won't. She no, won't do it. When they sent me home after I had, um, after I had my stroke, and they sent me home on my exit stuff, they were talking about uh, giving yourself a shot. I think it was a heparin. I think it's a blood thinner. They're like you have to give it to yourself. Yeah. yeah, so you have to give it to yourself in your stomach. And she was like, "So can I show you how to do it?" I said, "You can show me, but I'm not gonna do it." Not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like you show my mother because I'm <laughs> will not be sticking myself. <laughs> right. I want to say it's just like his heart rate and that kind of thing. I don't think they actually yeah. something like this. All these little packages. Like you open that, you open it. They mm -hmm. send it. <laughs> when, doctors, when you all start telehealthing blood work, let me know. Look, like when y'all mm -hmm. figure out a way to do it. Wow. I'm, I'll, I be down. I'll be down for that clinical trial. I'll I'll help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we got off on a tangent. We're so sorry. <laughs> we had to. There's so much. There's so much going on. We had to have some. We had to laugh. Um, uh, and we had sandwich. Yeah. So, so with, okay. with everything, with everything that's going on, bring it back. You know, we're doing, we're doing the sandwich here. Uh, <laughs> joy, joy in the beginning, sadness in the middle, and, and the joy and pain. And then joy, <laughs> yes. <laughs> What do y'all, uh, what, first off, what are y'all thankful for and how are y'all plan on giving back this holiday season? Oh gosh, this is so easy. I'm going first. Me, me, me. I'm thankful for okay. vacation. <laughs> I'm thankful for, and, I, and guess what? I'm not even going anywhere. I'm just thankful that I don't have to be in front of a computer all day. Um, mm -hmm. I'm thankful to be away and to not have to worry about any stressors for like the next four weeks or so. It's gonna be a blessing. We all need a vacation. I don't know how long y'all are, true. but we all need just a little bit of a break um, from these wonderful computers that we have to sit in front of all the time. And then how I'm going to give back, um, I'm going to, I have already done so, but I'm gonna to continue to give to my um, church's angel tree project. So that's something that we have every year. Um, we sponsor a child or children um who are in in and outside of our church who are in need so i'm going to continue to donate to that and then also um my gym is doing a toy drive so i'm going to take some toys there too and give give back in that way as well my husband has some toys that he don't need i'm going to donate them to other children <laughs> that's not right that's not right i hope he watches till the end tomorrow. If he watches tomorrow he'll be like what <laughs> what about you um, so I had a quick question about the angel tree. Is mm -hmm. that still, um, is that through, still through Miss Stella or yes. is that, okay. Yes. My mom was asking about that. So mm -hmm. I'm going to tell her about that. Um, so I have, I have been giving a lot this year. I don't know why. Um, I don't, that's Cause you don't bad. buy nothing. Cause you, don't I don't, buy. I don't be buying stuff. I have been donating quite a, quite a bit this year. Um, we, a couple of weeks ago, we highlighted, um, what is it Our, my sister's keeper yes yes and so I gave to them but um because they um provide you know uh things for mothers for mothers, mothers yeah yeah um so I've also given to uh, um care to share outreach center and food pantry which is here in Charlotte North Carolina and the director's name is um Hattie McNeely and I met her at Trinity Worship Center one day I just randomly she started talking to me and she asked for my number mm -hmm. and I, I I gave it to her I just <laughs> did because that's what you do when older black women ask you for your information that's you true. give it you, no question. Question. you just give it to them. <laughs> you just give it to them and so she actually called me randomly like a month ago I had no and normally I don't answer well you know Tiffany knows I like to answer numbers I don't know it makes right. me excited <laughs> But she I'm won't answer person, the but... number she does know. Just the one. Well, she I don't knows. answer those. Yeah, <laughs> no, I delete. I ignore those. But yeah. She called me and we talked for about thirty minutes, and it was really nice to hear from her. And um, I went ahead and and donated to her. So that's what I'm going to be doing, and um, I'm gonna do some more donations. And this is gonna sound bad, and I'm gonna get in trouble for this, but I'm okay with staying here. In I Charlotte know. for the house for Christmas. I'm good. I know. My mom is not gonna be good when she hears if she watches. Hopefully she'll skip this one. She's not. <laughs> <we, laughs> 
Not at all. You don't have to drive seven and a half hours with a yeah. with a four year old. Trust, That's not trust. fun. I know. Oh, not to look cool and sit in a hotel and not be able to visit people. So, you know. Right, Tiffany. In-laws didn't know about the hotel. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> Breaking live news. <laughs> you worse than CNN. Breaking news. But you're right. Exactly. We would have been up in that room because we can't get together. So I'm happy that we're going to um, that we have Khalifa delivering the the meats or pseudo meat Substances. and we're gonna yes yes <laughs> we're gonna do the size it's gonna be a nice relaxing time so that's what I'm thankful for that's what's up mm -hmm. you get to what have a you, vacation mm -hmm. you get to have yes. a vacation yeah. yes Brandon we want to know your thoughts Brandon, what about you? oh you know what it's my turn yeah <laughs> 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 want to ask you what it's my turn we hear, um, you, we hear from you so so regularly come on give us some words <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, I'm 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 really thankful. I tip, you know, my vacation's coming up as well. So I am thankful to just to get a chance to rest my mind. It's been a it's been a rough been a rough year for me, and I've been going pedal to the metal since June, and um, I'm getting I'm just getting worn down, really and truly. My mind is getting worn down, and my body's getting worn down. We can tell. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, be, I come on the polos tired in the mornings now. <laughs> and uh, but what I'm going to do to give back is, as you all know, I've been really uh, involved with my ch uh, church's food pantry, and so giving giving back to them and giving them my time and energies and, and giving the food out and you know getting some money and, and doing this that and the other. So it's it's been a real blessing blessing to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Brandon, just think about all the cleaning you're going to get to do after the dinner for Christmas. After y'all get together, you're going to get to clean all of that. All of it. Wiping the, the lifestyle wipes and the sponges. And the, you know what? You know, you know what? You know what? I am actually happy about that. We know. One. <laughs> and I didn't even mention it because I was trying to chill. But y'all, hey. I got some. I got some cleaning projects around the house. I got some office. I'm trying to find if anybody has a, a cheap, a little cheapy desk and they want to sell me. I, uh, I I do need an extra desk for my command center. Uh, L for his command center. <laughs> <laughs> he needs an L situation because <laughs> he's also getting brackets to hang his screens up. All kinds of fun stuff. Oh wow! It's gonna be fun. Brackets. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Yes. Doing it big over here. That's right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Little bit of year in review for us because we're not going to have like a wrap up next week because we're going to finally get this guys night out episode we've been promised for so many months. But I'm so uh, excited. I'm very excited. But it just sounds like again we we don't have a lot of COVID blessings, but it sounds like um, this year, at least we have in this group been able to give more. Um, I know personally my complaint pre-COVID was I didn't have enough time to do stuff. Like I would want to do things, go help with the food baskets or, you know, go down to the food pantry stuff. I didn't have enough time to do any of that. Um, I would want to donate and didn't have, I guess I wouldn't say didn't have the resources, but was focused on buying other stuff. Um, so this year has really been like putting your priorities in place, but then also giving it, I feel like I've had time for everything. Like I've had enough time mm -hmm. to do everything that I usually have put off. And it's given me a chance to be more active, be more involved in ministries and communities, um, you know, helping out where I could. It's been that's that part has been a blessing for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I've had time to, to do other types of professional work that I wouldn't normally get to do. Um, a lot of the students that I normally would be seeing, they're not in the state anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so if they're not in the state, we can't treat them. And so that has created more space for me to be able to shift. And work with my son. Um, he's doing wonder. That is a that is a COVID blessing. Um, he is doing phenomenal with his reading and math. Yeah, he is. With and I can't speaking. believe. <laughs> Would you say with his speaking? We love when Caden comes to the polos to speak to us. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm like, wow. You can you really just reading sentences out here? And I I think that that shows that the thing we thought we couldn't do, which was teach him. We're doing that, and really, props goes to Sean because he does he does the lion share there. So. We know, we know. He does. Uh, I'm, I'm not even. He does. 
I'm not even going to put it. I'm only saying that because, and I, my boy Sean's gonna watch this tomorrow. Sean, you don't get enough props. We are, we're gonna you celebrate. You do not get Sean. enough props. You, you deserve you, a truck, Sean. You deserve a truck and all the Brazil nuts that you want, friend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve. You're trying to take me out with those Brazil nuts. You try to take me out. <laughs> this fake allergy. She's complaining about. All right. <laughs> this fake allergy that just was just was just developed this week. <laughs> Whatever. It's new. It's new. All of a sudden. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Brenny, you're going to get to talk trash next week with your guys. Okay, don't say nothing about us. Keep our name out your mouth. Don't okay, it. don't say nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're definitely excited about that. And I guess, I guess we probably need to wrap it up. You know, as Simone always says, we got to be respectful of the time. Respectful of the time. And uh, we seem to get more engagement when we keep this at an hour. So we're going to try to <laughs> make that happen. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Uh, so, with that said, you know, I hope you all take care of yourselves this holiday season. Do something nice with your families. Uh, do something for somebody else. But please mm-hmm. continue to wear your mask when you go out. You know, mm-hmm. Please stay safe. practice that that compassion that Tip was talking about. Even if it's a a bother to you, just run in, put your mask on, get in what you need to get in, and then get out of there. Get out. Um, and take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. And do for others. Do for others. Don't forget about about others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any words of wisdom, mm-hmm. Brendan, that you have for us before we go? Wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Again with the cleaning. <laughs> Always something clean. Right? Always the cleanliness. <laughs> wash your hands. Wash your hands. <laughs> wash your hands. Just, just the season for sneezing and everything like that. So <laughs> wash your hands. <laughs> the season for sneezing. <laughs> 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 Well, on that that note, y'all, on that note, (laughs) thank you all for watching. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Happy holidays to everyone. Definitely, for sure. And we all, we want to remind you because, you know, the year is almost over, but it's still a great day for justice for Breonna Taylor. Breonna Taylor. And others. There are many others now that have been added to that list. So, and others as well. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas, y'all. We don't see y'all no more. (laughs) Merry Christmas. (laughs) And and as always, Remain yours. Remain yours. Remain yours.